Number 53. A seagull flies at a velocity of 9.00 meters per second straight into the wind. If it takes the bird 20 minutes to travel 6 kilometers relative to the earth, what is the velocity of the wind? Okay, so this problem sounds fairly innocuous, but um, it, it's actually quite challenging because there's a couple of things left out. So first let's draw a grid and let's um, first calculate, instead of actually drawing some vectors here, let's first calculate what they're telling us in letter A. So they're mentioning that if it takes 20 minutes to travel, for the bird that is, right? 20 minutes to travel 6 kilometers relative to the earth, what is the velocity of the wind? All right, so first, just given the information, they tell us that the bird travels, right? The bird, I should say this, that the X displacement of the bird is going to be six kilometers. And the time, right, that the bird is traveling is going to be 20 minutes. So first thing I realize, even without doing anything else, I, I don't like the units, kilometers and minutes. So let's just convert these uh, to meters and seconds. So multiply that by 1,000 meters over one kilometer. That'll be 6,000 now meters. And then times this by 60 seconds over one minute. And that'll simply be now uh, 1,200 seconds, right? Okay, so that's a little better. So now, if I were to try to think about what could I calculate knowing a distance or displacement and time for the bird, I would say, well, the velocity, right? So I can now find the velocity of the bird, right? By simply taking now 6,000 meters, dividing it by 1,200 seconds. Okay, so this is the velocity of the bird. So 6,000 divided by 1,200 comes out to be five, right? So five meters per second. Now, by just saying, since this is a relative velocity problem, by just saying the velocity of the bird is five meters per second, that is not satisfactory we have to then relate this velocity of the bird to something. What's the velocity in relation to for the bird? Well, it says that if the bird takes 20 minutes to travel six kilometers relative to the earth, right? What that means is that the velocity of the bird here is really relative to the earth. So I'm gonna write that here. Velocity of the bird relative to the earth is equal to five. Okay, now. Let's go back to the problem. It says a seagull flies with a velocity of nine meters per second. Well, wait a minute, nine meters per second relative to what? Well, it definitely cannot be, because I just did the math, it definitely cannot be the velocity relative to the earth. It's impossible because we just calculated what it should be given the information. So this velocity right here must be the only other thing, only other un, uh, you know variable in this problem is the wind. This has to be then the velocity of the bird, right, relative to the wind. It's the only thing I can, that's the only thing it can be. So now let's draw that in our uh, coordinate plane. Okay, so here is, this is now the velocity of the bird relative to the wind, and that will equal nine. Let's just get rid of all the units for now, okay? Everything's in meters per second from here on out. Okay, great, so that's fine. Now, wait a minute, if this is the velocity of the bird relative to the wind, and this is the velocity of the bird relative to the earth, right? And it tells us that the seagull flies with a velocity straight into the wind. That means the wind is opposing, right? So it should make sense that we should have an opposing wind vector up here, right? Where we have the velocity of the wind. Now, what is this velocity of the wind in relation to? Well, most likely this is the velocity of the wind in relation to the earth, okay? So how do I know that or why do I know that? Well, what are they asking me to find, first of all? It says, what is the velocity of the wind? Well, again, here's the question. Velocity of the wind with respect to what? A lot of things are missed out in this problem. So I'm gonna assume that they're asking me the velocity of the wind with respect to earth, okay? So now if that's what I'm looking to calculate, what I'm going to use here is the formula on the right-hand side, where it tells me this, and follow the A's and the C's and the B's, okay? They have to line up specifically. So if I want to find the velocity of the wind with respect to Earth, what I need to know is I need to then know the velocity of the wind with respect to the bird, 
because that's the b, that's the other variable in the problem, plus then the velocity of the bird with respect to the earth. Okay, cool. So let's calculate this, right? So the velocity of the wind with respect to earth will be equal to then uh, the velocity of the wind with respect to the bird. Now, we already noted that that is this value up here, right? But it's the opposite, right? This says the velocity of the bird with respect to the wind is 9, and I drew it in the positive x direction, so that's a positive 9. But if I were to flip it, right, the velocity of the wind, then with respect to the bird, it should just be the opposite, meaning it should just be negative. So this term right here is going to be a negative 9, okay? You can, I can write it over here on the side that VA relative to B should be equal to negative VB relative to A. So that's fine. And then plus now, the velocity of the bird with respect to the earth, and we found that over here to be five. Okay, so what that tells me is that the velocity of the wind with respect to the earth should be negative four. Now that does make sense because look back to the picture over here and look at the way I have the wind pointing. I mean, it should be negative. So this is a negative four. So th that's the answer to uh, letter A. All right. So a little challenging here because we got to make a couple of assumptions and stuff, but uh, we got through it. So let's take a look at letter B. It says, if the bird turns around, and here's a <laughs> bird turns around and flies with the wind, how long will it take to return the six kilometers? So we know, right, if the bird is traveling now with the wind, it should take less time. I'm sure a bunch of you have flown in planes and you realize that one leg of the trip takes less than the other leg, usually because of a jet stream. So when the wind is at your back, takes less time. When you're going into the wind, it takes more time. So we should expect the number to come out to be uh, less in terms of time. It should be shorter. All right. So let's see what they're, what we need to find. All right. So remember, we're solving for time. Okay. So here's part B. Now remember, we're solving for time because it says how long does it take the bird to return six kilometers? So if I'm thinking about how long it's going to take the bird to return six kilometers, which is a displacement on Earth, right? So this value, this displacement, they really told me the displacement in relation to the Earth, right? And then that'll be divided by the time. So what I need to know in order to solve this in terms of knowing my velocity is equal to x over t formula, what I need to know in order, in order to solve this is I need to know the velocity of the bird then with respect to the Earth. Okay, so does that make sense so far? All right, now we might mistakenly say, oh great, well here we have it, here's the value, it's five, let me just plug it in. Mm -mm -mm. It's not five anymore because the picture changed, right? If I had to now draw a coordinate, we know that um, the bird is now moving this way and the wind is moving still in the same direction. So I'm going to assume the wind is constant. I have to, otherwise I can't solve the problem. So the velocity of the wind with respect to the earth is still negative four. And now I also have to assume something here about the, about the wind, excuse me, about the a bird's velocity. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume that the nine meters per second that they gave us is a constant value. All right, so meaning that the velocity of the bird with respect to the wind is going to stay the same in both frames. If I don't do that, again, it's basically impossible to solve. So what I'm going to say is that this, now you may disagree with the assumptions I've made and that's totally fine, um, but we have to make assumptions of some sort. So given the assumptions that I'm mentioning, the calculations will come out correct. So right now, this is now the velocity of the bird with respect to the wind, and this is going to stay the same. It's going to be a now negative 9, though, because the picture has changed, so no longer am I really considering that diagram at the top. All right? So now, remember, I'm looking for the velocity of the bird with respect to the earth, so let's write out our formula. So the velocity of the bird with respect to the earth, remember, keep this formula in mind, should be equal to then the velocity of the bird with respect to the wind, plus the velocity of the wind with respect to the earth. Okay, so let's see what we know in here. Remember, we gotta consider the second picture. So now that will be equal to the velocity of the bird with respect to the wind. Well, 
I just mentioned what that should be, right? Because we're just going to take the bird and turn him around, okay? So his velocity should still be the same. It's going to be negative 9, okay? And now the velocity of the wind with respect to the earth, well, we already found that before, and that's going to be the same value, right, of negative 4. That should still be the velocity of the wind with respect to the earth because that didn't change. So this is a negative 4. And notice we kind of get the result we're expecting. We're going to be adding these two things together, right? Two negatives, we add the values, and this becomes a negative now 13, right? It's negative, obviously, because it, they're both pointing to the left, all right? So this is good. Now, in terms of then calculating, right, my values here, all the uh, work should come out fine because what I'm going to do is Remember, our displacement now is also going to be in the negative x direction, right? So let me write this formula again. The volume of the bird with respect to the earth is equal to the displacement on the earth divided by time. So this value was a negative 13. The displacement of the bird, remember, was 6 kilometers, but now it's in the left direction, not in the right direction. So therefore, it's now negative 6 kilometers, which is the same thing as saying negative 6,000 meters all over time. So now let's see what the time works out to be. And notice how it's going to be positive because all the negatives will cancel. So negative 6,000 divided by a 13. Oops, sorry, uh, 13, yep. So we get now 462, 462 seconds. Okay, look at the original time in seconds. It was 1,200. Right? In terms of minutes, just take that value, 462, and divide it by 60. That's 7.7 .7 minutes. So this works out to be 7.7 .7 minutes now, as opposed to 20 minutes. So the answers do make sense. Everything sounds good. Again, I had to make a couple of assumptions here. Um, so eh, part C I already discussed. Right, It's going to be shorter going with the wind than into the wind. And the numbers worked out to be that way. All right? So guys, thanks for checking in. Hopefully this helped. Please remember to subscribe and um, I'll see you in another problem.